All right, welcome back to part three. In this part of our tutorial, we're going to make the asteroid and we're going to make sure that it moves around and that it wraps around the screen. Let's get started just by making a new child node on this uh, game. Uh, we're going to make this one in Area 2D again so that we can have the option to detect collisions. And again, inside those signals, there's an area entered where other area enters. So, for example, the player or a bullet when we finally make one. Uh, we're going to rename this to uh, Asteroid and again we'll need to make all the parts for this so we're going to add a child which is going to be the actual sprite that sprite, if I change back to Inspector, that sprite we're going to, um, in part 1 we set up the sprites that we were going to use so we've got this Meteor, so I'm just going to drag that in so we've got this Meteor, it's pretty big so uh, I think what I'll do Let's just use that scale tool again. If you hold, um, if you hold control at the same, oh no, it's not control. It's shift at the same time. Then it'll scale uniformly. <clears throat> so let's go back to normal and then hold shift and scale. So I want to get it down to yeah something like that, maybe just a bit bigger. Uh, you can have it any way you like. I'm also going to need to add the uh, collision polygon. So. Um, just add this collision polygon 2D just like we did with the uh, player. I'm just going to zoom in and create the points. So <clears throat> just go into the select mode here and then create points. And then you should be able to just uh, click and drag around this uh, asteroid to get a really good match for the collision polygon. That's pretty good. We'll leave it as it is. And then on the asteroid, I'm just going to make sure that we can't select any of the children. So just click this little funny button as well so that we've got this asteroid now in theory we should make a separate scene of this asteroid but what i might do just for now for testing is um i might just put one on the scene and then we can write the code for it and then we'll adjust that later where we need to so what i'm going to do <clears throat> with this asteroid is uh, i'm just going to leave it where it is and um actually no i'm gonna i'm just gonna move it down into the into the um, center of the screen approximately because the first thing we're going to do on our script is get it to initialize with a, a velocity, a random velocity. So we'll get started by making a script. Um, it's going to be empty as before and it's called asteroid.gd. Um, this one extends the area 2D so I can get access to those signals as I mentioned before. But all we're going to do is we're going to need a, a velocity. So I'm going to say um, create a, a variable called velocity and I'll initialize it to um, a vector 2.0 so it's absolutely uh, it's not moving at the very beginning. The next thing we're going to do is um, let's actually write the process so if we um, create a func underscore process uh, we want to move based on velocity so it's pretty simple you just make the position equal to the position plus uh, the velocity times time so velocity times delta so we will need to actually um, in order to test this we'll need to make sure that the vector uh, the velocity is not zero so we're going to do that in the ready so um, just func underscore ready uh, what we can do is just to test this to make sure it works we can just make it equal to something so it's going to be a vector to so uh, we can give it just like two values, like say uh, 500 and minus 200. Um, this just initializes this value on the ready at the beginning of the um, scene to be these values. Um, and if I run it, you'll see that it does actually move. So we don't, these are obviously pretty big values as well, but it's a good uh, way to check. But we want these to be randoms, so we want to initialize them to some random values. So what I'll do is just create a variable for the um, x velocity, and I'm going to use this awesome um, rand range function. And if you look this up in the help, you'll see that you get a floating point value that from and a floating point value to. Um, because these are floating point values, we can use kind of anything we want, positives and negatives. <clears throat> and it'll automatically kind of round it to integers when it uses it for movement. So um, let's guess at, say, uh, minus 100 and positive 100. So the x value on ready when this line runs will be some value randomly between minus 100 
and positive 100. And we'll do the same for the uh, y value. So it's just a round range again, and then minus 100 and positive 100. And then instead of initializing to those ones, we'll just say x comma y. So we'll initialize to the two random values. And when we test this, um, we should see that it moves off in this direction. Now one really uh, cool thing that you'll see is that uh, the way that Godot does its randoms, um, even though we've chosen a random number, it's still going in exactly the same velocity every time I run it. And the reason for that is if you look up this rand range um, inside here, um, it does it does need to be um, seeded or randomized in order to give you uh, different random numbers every time. Um, there is um, inside the the, um, the random uh, uh, namespace here, there is this randomize function, and this just randomly seeds the number generator every time you call this randomize function. So just by adding this to our um, our code, we should end up randomizing every single time. So if we just add a randomize to the top of your code, and then if we run it, um, we should see that it's a different one this time, and I run it again, and it's a different one and I run it again and it's a different one. So you do need to call this otherwise you get non-random random numbers because um, if you look it up as computer science concepts, computers can't actually do random numbers. They have to do mathematical calculations so um, they're not true random numbers but this is the closest we'll get to it. So we've managed to um, make the asteroids and we've managed to make the asteroids move but we haven't made the asteroids wrap around the screen so <clears throat> Let's just get on with that. The way we're going to do it is, um, the bottom line is we're just going to check its position because we're um, accessing a position in the process every frame and we're going to check its position and we're just going to uh, change it should we need to. Um, the project and project settings is where you'll find the size of your screen. So under display and window, my, um, I just didn't change anything, mine's just default so it's 1024 by 600. So I could um, find and code this, but because we've got them here, I'll just hard code them in. I know it's not great practice, but um, as long as we don't have a different size screen, this will work perfectly. So all we really want to do is just check their positions. So we're just going to do um, a bunch of if statements. So if position.x is uh, less than zero, then we want to make the position.x equal 1024, which is the right hand side of the screen. So if it goes off the left, we push it over to the right. And then obviously if the position.x is greater than 1024, then we want to make the position.x equal to zero. Um, we should be able to test this now before we continue any further. So if I test this scene, um, I wish I'd made them a little bit faster now. It should actually get to the edge of the screen and then wrap to this side. And you notice it retains its velocity. So it does work, but it doesn't work across the top. So um, we're going to more or less do uh, exactly what we did here. We're going to say position.y is less than zero. Then we want to make um, position.y equal to, uh, it was 600. And for the bottom part, if position.y is greater than 600, then we want to make position.y equal to zero. So that will just wrap them all around. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot of lines of code, but this makes me a little bit antsy, and I don't like to see stuff like this done. Um, this process could get longer and longer and longer, and this is a good opportunity to kind of refactor this a little bit, because all of this stuff is just doing one thing. So why don't we just turn that into a function? So we'll just uh, create a new function and we'll call it um, wrap. And then it doesn't take any parameters. And all it does is this stuff. So I'm gonna just control X and control V and chuck it in there. And then in order um, to run this stuff inside a process, we'll just run the wrap. So we'll just say uh, wrap. So this means that this function um, 
makes my main process a lot easier. We can bury this somewhere else and uh, this makes this a little bit neater so we can see what's going on. Uh, the other great thing about doing that is because with this one function, because it's working on the actual position of the um, of the node, we can just copy this, um, control C, uh, go to the player code, go down to the bottom, control V, paste it in, and then inside of our process for the player, we can also run um, wrap. And that way we can have the player wrap too. So let's just test that, make sure it works. So the um, asteroid should wrap around and the player should wrap around. And if the player goes across each of them, then it actually works perfectly. And I just want to check the other one as well, because it's really important that you check all of it. Um, this is uh, testing for games. And you'll see that this um, asteroid is doing the same thing as uh, it was before. And uh, so everything's working. So that was the um, asteroid wrapping around screen and the player wrapping around the screen. So that's pretty good. We've done a fair amount. We'll stop the video there so it doesn't get too long and we'll move on to the uh, the bullet or possibly uh, spawning in lots of asteroids. We'll, we'll decide on uh, which one of those we're going to do first for the next one. Hope you're enjoying the series and uh, stick with it.